Hey guys, what's going on? This is another Outdoorsman One video. Today we're going to be doing a full vehicle walk around of my 2014 Tacoma TRD Off-Road with an Alucab Canopy Camper. So before I jump into the video, I just want to take a brief moment to ask you guys, if you like the content that you see here, consider subscribing and checking out my other social medias where I post a lot more frequently as well. Click the link up in the cards or down in the uh, bio or the pinned comment. Check out all the companies that I work with like Bucked Up Supplements, MyMedic, Taco Vinyl, etc. All of these different awesome companies that I can get you discounts on. Hest, like the mattress I've got in there. Snorkel Upgrade, like the snorkel pre-filter that I've got on there. All of these awesome companies that I work with help get you a discount and also help support what I'm doing here. So it's been a minute since I've done a full walk around of my rig and I thought that now would be a great time to do it because I've got some huge changes coming here shortly to the rig and also to my brand in general. And I just wanna get this kinda of out of the way so we can start building on this video. As well, this is going to be a two part. This is gonna be part one. Part two is going to be talking about actually having lived out of the canopy camper for about eight months. I am back into a, an apartment now, but I did live out of this consecutively for eight months. And that was a really awesome experience, but I wanna talk about that in its own dedicated video, talking about the things that I learned and whatnot, but that's a topic for a future day. So let's dive into this. Let's get some housekeeping things out of the way first. This is a 2014 Tacoma TRD Off-Road. That means it has the Toyota E-Locker in the back and it does have their precursor to crawl control, but nothing too fancy. So starting off with the most common question I get asked, what tires and suspension am I running? Let's start out off with the tires. These are BF Goodrich KM3s. These are my favorite tires in existence and arguably some of the toughest tires you can get. These are 285-70 R17. We'll take these scars for my evidence. I've never had a blowout on this tire. I am running Dirt King upper control arms. They're super beefy and I really love them since I've installed them. Up front for the suspension, I'm still running the Icon 2.5 Reservoir Lift. Uh, it's about a two and a half inch lift up front. As you can see in there, my coilovers are very, very rusty. So this might be one of the things that will be changing. When it comes to wheels, I'm running Stealth Customs Ray 10s. These are the gunmetal gray ones. I really love these tires. I constantly get asked what offset they are and I always forget. I believe these are the heavier offset. On the inside of the wheel there, you can see I've got power brake drums and power brake brakes. Soon I will be getting the full power brake replacement kit. On the back of the truck, I'm running the Icon 2.0 aluminum series suspension. And that suspension is paired with the Deaver Stage 3 leaf kit. So it's the heaviest leaf kit you can get for the Tacoma with a Dirt King knuckle. So talking about the front of the truck, I have this taco vinyl grill. I did a little bit of fabrication to it so that it would sit flush and more perfectly on the front, but they refurbished it and sent it back to me. I think they did an amazing job of covering up all of the nicks and dents and bugs and brushes that have tortured this grill for the last three years. Still going strong, still love it. I personally still love Raptor lights. Feel free to judge me. The Lil Bees fabrication bumper, absolutely wonderful. I have winched many of vehicles out of bad situations with this bumper and I haven't had any issues. You'll see that I don't have a winch on currently. Hopefully soon one will be taking that spot. When it comes to the yellow lights, these are no name brand LED lights that do a good enough job. And I'm still rocking the Amazon Customs retrofit-ish headlights on the front of the truck. Soon these will be getting replaced as well. 
On the hood, I've got a Cascadia 4x4 solar panel. I've got a separate video out about that if you have any questions regarding the solar panel. Moving to the passenger side of the vehicle, and I guess this is on both sides, but mainly on the passenger side because I've got more going on over here. You'll see that I've got the McNeil fiberglass, the McNeil fiberglass 2.5 wide body kit for the second gen Tacoma. I think McNeil's wide body for the front of the truck looks the best. I think it matches the body lines the best and looks the most natural. And honestly, most people don't realize that this is actually a wide body until you look at it from the back. And here from this angle, you can see the uh, wide body kit a little bit better and how pronounced it is from the back. Then you'll see this monstrosity. I went, not in a bad way, but the monstrosity of a way that I had to mount my snorkel. This is a Dobinson 4x4 snorkel. This is their larger snorkel and obviously not the Amazon snorkel because I wanted to be able to get the most amount of airflow into the motor as possible. The Amazon ones are much smaller than this. I really like the snorkel. It looks really good, it looks really aggressive. And then this is paired with the snorkel upgrade, Cyclone pre-filter. Do you need a pre-filter? No, but you really don't need a hood mounted solar panel either. I like it. It does a really good job at keeping my air filter clean. And obviously I don't have to worry about it when it's raining or snowing or something like that as it does here in Utah. And I don't have to get out and turn my snorkel head around. Talking a little bit more about the mounting job that I had to do here, you'll see that I've got this little trim cover, which cat catches a lot of grime. But uh, I had to do that because I had to recess the entire the entirety of the snorkel. Normally only right here is where you have to drill the hole to mount a snorkel to the side of the vehicle, but with the wide body, the majority of the snorkel had to be recessed so that it would actually fit. You'll notice that it is not 100% mounted. Up at the top, I've got this little bracket right here which keeps it from overextending, but I am very anti-pop riveting the snorkel into the side of my vehicle. This has been on for a year and a half or something like that now, almost two years, and I haven't had really any issues. I just have to make sure the fitment on the inside of the snorkel uh, is good before I go out on some extensive trip or something like that. On the roof of the truck, you'll see that I've got the KC Gravity Pro 6 LED light bar. These are just the covers paired with the KC M rack. I love this rack. It is a really great rack up top. Normally I do have a Rome, uh, I forgot what actual size it is, but normally I do keep a Rome box up here. I like that up there. It just eats a lot of my gas mileage. It actually drops about two MPGs. Pretty much only leave it up there when I'm going on trips and whatnot. The Pro 6 light bar, I absolutely love the pattern of it. I have had a problem with it. One of my connections actually snapped, but KC is really good about honoring their warranty and that got replaced. So this, this one right here is a brand new uh, LED. Over here you can see I'm rocking the Tactilian flags now. These are, these are really good flags. They, uh, they're magnetic so you can take them off when you wash the vehicle and obviously they don't leave the, the scum and villainy. No, they don't leave the, uh, the crap on there from when you take off a of vinyl. Over here, I have the TRD Pro style uh, mirrors. These are heated and have sequential LEDs in them. I'll probably be making another video about that add-on, but uh, these were aftermarket. Mine didn't have this in them before, just the TRD off-road. They were kind of that matte plastic. But the thing that I found is this plastic does scratch a lot easier so it's it shows a lot more of the uh, damage. This, getting a better look at the KC M rack here you can see I've got the side light pods covered with the amber. These lights are very 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 bright so that's why I put the amber covers on them because I use them kind of as camp lights when I get to camp. I can kick both lights on the side so I can park my vehicle better, get everything out of the truck, get camp set up if I am setting up at night. So having really piercing bright lights has never been something that I really like to do in the middle of the night. And then obviously bugs kind of flock to that. 
So the amber lights help kind of cut that out. So I guess this is the only time we're having too much light is, uh, has been a problem for me. <laughs> Going into the passenger side of the vehicle, you can see I've got WeatherTech floor guards. They're really fantastic. And then over here, I've got a MyMedic, MyFac, uh, really awesome little first aid kit. I have this set up as kind of a trauma kit. Uh, we can talk about these in a different video that I have planned here shortly, but this is kind of my trauma kit. If I see an accident on the side of the road, I can grab that really quickly from that little panel there. And then I just threw some shears in there because that's probably something gonna be likely to pair with it. And then I also keep a Sharpie in there. If I do need to throw a tourniquet on or something like that, I can notate that. I've also learned from my career in law enforcement, having Sharpies on you so you can write things down on your skin, on gloves, on whatever, uh, works really well because you know ballpoint pens kind of suck at writing on your skin if you need to take a note or something like that. So really awesome little first aid kit. I'll put a link up in the card, uh, get you a discount on my medic stuff. Really awesome kits. Then the fact that this just turns into a something I can throw over my shoulder really fast. Really awesome. Over here, I've got a RAM mount with the tablet mount. I use this for my cell phone as well, but you can obviously uh, use this for your tablet. This is where I have my tablet mounted, where I do all of my Gaia tracks and stuff like that. This is where that sits on this little arm here. This is their eight inch arm. And this is just mounted to a Cali raised LED side panel. I've got the panel corresponding on the other side where I mount my holster. If I'm going on a longer trip or something like that where my gun's not gonna be on me the whole time, or if I am gonna be hopping out of my vehicle or a long road trip where I'm not sitting there with my gun tucked in there. Then right here, I've just got a quick tourniquet. Uh, this is a cat tourniquet with a little, um, Kydex holster. This is on a Blade Tech mount. Um, I just leave it in there like that because it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't fall off. I've never had it move even when it's not mounted. And then if I'm going to the range or something like that, I can put this on my belt and just clip that on there. But otherwise, having that little combat tourniquet right there does me really good. In the back of the vehicle, again, I've got the WeatherTech floor guards, does really good. And then I have removed the dual seat back here just so that I have more space. Originally I did this so I could put my fridge in there. That didn't really come to fruition, but now I'm working on building kind of a cabinet setup back here. Uh, back here in my, my passenger seat, three things I always keep is a fire starting kit. This is in a first tactics uh, little kit, but I've got three different ways of starting a fire plus a knife. Um, Really awesome thing to just kind of keep around. Some dude wipes, always something good to have. And then a tire uh, repair kit. On the other side in the cup holder, I have a automotive, uh, three types of fires, fire extinguisher. And then I always just keep a Shemog, you know, one of those uh, little deals in here because has a billion different uses, wrap it around your neck if you're out in the sun and whatnot. Now let's talk about this thick boy. On the back, my table here is made by, no, I'm just kidding, my fiberglass bedsides are made by ADV fiberglass. Here's the deal. Comparing the two companies, I think ADV makes a much better fiberglass. The actual composite is much better and it doesn't look like paper mache like the McNeil's does up front. However, the finish is much better on the McNeil's. I've had this chip much, many more times than the McNeil. The McNeil cracks a little bit, but the ADV just chips and flakes. So I've had to bondo and fill this quite a few times. However, it's fiberglass, it's nature of the beast. Here you can see kind of how pronounced the uh, fiberglass is. This is a four and a half inch uh, wide kit on the back. It was a little bit more than I wanted, but it was the best looking option that I had. Now, looking at it, I'm, 
I'm happy that I got it. It sits really well. Body lines match up really well. And uh, it, do, it does a really good job. It doesn't catch as many rocks as I thought it would up front, so that's a good thing. Luckily, my buddy that helped me install it had the wherewithal and the foresight to uh, install these little brackets, these little homemade brackets for the fiberglass so that this wouldn't buckle. And uh, it's done a really good job. This is just connected to the bed frame there, and it's done a good job. So now let's dive into talking about the Alu Cab. I don't want to be pros and cons, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what my thoughts are on it, because I'm saving that for part two, the actual living out of this, and another video I have planned on having an Alu Cab for two years and what my thoughts are on it. This is just a vehicle walk around. So this is a short bed truck. Up here, I've got a table. Table just pulls out like so. It's one of the benefits of the Alu Cab is you don't have to cut your racks on most of the vehicles. So my grand total on solar is 290 watts of solar input. So if you guys are unfamiliar with the way a Alu Cab canopy camper works, it is pretty simple. The sides open up just like that. They're on their own gas struts and you've got full access to the inside of the camper. I have my own built-in kind of shelving and cabinets in here. And then the back opens up like a barn door and you have full access to step into your camper. On the side here, I do have two quick fist mounts where I do usually mount a ax when I am out in the woods because I always like to have an ax. I, I don't know, that's just me, but that's usually where that goes. Right here, I've got a GP factor uh, step, which helps me if I need to get up on the roof of the, uh, of the truck. It gives me something I can stand on, and now I can get up to the roof of my truck even when the camper is open. On the inside of the camper, on the left side here, you'll see I've got another much larger MyFac. The other one was the Sidekick. This is the MyFac. Uh, much larger, much more of a trauma kit, and it also operates the same way, where it tears off if I need it to. That kind of just hangs there. Uh, I normally have my bow hanging up on those eyelets back there. When you step into the camper, if the tent portion is open, you can just pop these guys up. And your bed platform is completely out of the way so you can stand up in the center here. I just have this bungee corded down so I can remove it as necessary. But this is an EcoFlow Delta. This is my power source for the most part. I do have a dual battery set up underneath the hood connected to my uh, multi-panel there. But this is the majority of my solar power that I use and inputs for my fridge here. I just use these bungee cords to keep it here. So this is a dual zone fridge freezer by Iceco. This is the VL75 Pro. It is a huge fridge, but it works really great. I have this side set up to be a freezer. I have this side set up to be a fridge. And this is connected to the EcoFlow Delta. This right here is my input for shore, shore power. And this is my solar input that connects all of my solar panels to it. So currently my batteries are at 99% and I am using no power because the compressor isn't running on the fridge and I am drawing 112 watts of power into it. So this is kind of my setup for the time being. The inside of this camper is what's going to be changing the most. Uh, if you guys have watched my past multi-part series on the Alu Cab, you will have watched me build this. Uh, and as I said when I was building it, that this is kind of a preliminary build out to see 
what it was that I wanted and what I didn't want and how I wanted it. And now I figured out what the things are that I want and what the things are that I need and how I want to set it up in here. This side, my cabinet opens up. This side I store, I have a, a, a Ryobi electric chainsaw that I always keep back here. I always keep a hammock back here, a gas stove and my high lift jack. And on this side is more of where I keep like camping chairs and flashlights and clothing and stuff like that. Again, this will all be getting revamped. On the inside here, I've got insulation mounted, which helps because this is a giant black box. So obviously it absorbs a lot of heat and uh, it is very warm. If you're not familiar with the canopy campers, you can see how much space they have on the inside. So here you can see kind of a little bit better option of the kind of lift setup. Up here I keep three pillows at all times because I sleep comfy. And then you get to hop up and close the other door. Upstairs, you've got a light, you've got a couple little places for storage, and then the entire roof is quilted. I went ahead and replaced the mattress with a Hest mattress. I think they make some of the best little mattresses for rooftop tents, and then they've got their awesome new sheets. Here you can see the mesh windows as well as the canvas windows to block 100% of the light out if you wanted to. Another note I always like to show people about the Alucabs is they are actually two layers of canvas which go all the way around. You can see my hand right there. So it is insulated and also that helps cut out moisture issue that a lot of rooftop tents and whatnot have. The quilted roof help with that. All of your zippers have these nice zipper pulls on them and they do a really good job. They're nice and rubber. Since I'm a short guy, I hardly ever close this when I'm camping, but if you did have multiple people or you were really tall, you do have a bed section on that and you can see how much space there is upstairs. And you do have this little overhang like a rooftop tent. On that barn door, you do have a gas strut so it will open itself and keep itself open, as well as it does have a, retrain, a retaining strap to keep it from overextending, and as well you've got an articulating light on here so that you can illuminate everything. All of these lights everywhere are white and red, and they have three different brightness settings. You've got this nice little handle to close the door. Then also you do have latches on the inside so that you can lock the camper closed from the inside without having to mess around with the barn door on the back. Closing up the camper, I've got my shore power inlet here. Just plug a normal extension cord in there and it'll top off my EcoFlow Delta. The EcoFlow Delta does have a quick charge feature. So if you are connected to an AC outlet, it'll go from zero to 90 in 60 minutes. So that is really nice if you're going on a quick overnight trip and you're like, oh, let's go. You can charge your batteries really quick, get the heated blanket up there, good to go. Also down here, I do have an air chuck so that I can plug into my onboard air. Currently my onboard air is down because my compressor had some issues and I am redoing that setup. That's why I've got this Warren style uh, AC, or sorry, DC plug down there. That DC plug is a high output plug. So I can just quick connect to my compressor that I'm using in the meantime. And that's just kind of hanging there. I do keep a WeatherTech footstep on the back here. This prevents people from bumping into me. Not that I'm too worried with my super heavy uh, iron bowl bumper on the back. Not my favorite bumper, but it's what I have and I really haven't had any issues with it. Also, it's super beefy, so I'm never worried if somebody rear ends me that I'm gonna have any vehicle damage. On the back of the vehicle, you will see that I've got a full size spare. This is a really good placement for the tire because I don't have a swing out or anything like that. It's just on there and it's designed to carry that weight. Up top, I've got some Cali raised LED. Uh, these are supposed to be like your side lights, but I use them as chase lights and I think they do really well. And then you can see the beautiful overhang that lets me see out of my rear window.
And that, guys, has been my walk around of my rig. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Let me know if you guys are interested in what is to come and what you think some of the things coming up might be. I'm grateful for your, all your guys' support. Make sure you check me out on Instagram. Those updates will be coming a lot quicker on Instagram than on YouTube. I like to vet things out before I uh, post a video review on them, as you guys know. But thanks guys for watching. Stay tuned for part two where I talk about the van life that I did for eight months and also the I've had an Alucab Canopy Camper for two years review. Thanks guys for watching. Be good, be dangerous, be ready, and we'll see you on the trail.